So I've moved back and forth quite a few times the past five or six years, especially the last two. So all my horror movies are currently still in these big boxes that I just haven't reshelved yet. So I thought it would just be a fun video to randomly reach my hand. I have one box over here that's full of movies. One box over here that's full of movies, of horror movies. And I thought it would just be fun to reach my hand down in them, go back and forth here and there, and just pull out whatever movie that I get and give a brief review. I don't know how many I'm going to do yet. I thought this would be fun, so here we go. <laughs> okay, so Alien on VHS. I got this at my local video store, I think. Either my local video store or it was at like a... CD warehouse about an hour from my house. I got this at uh, Goodwill. That's where I got this. This is obviously a classic. A lot of people debate whether or not Alien or Aliens is better. Most horror fans will prefer Alien over Aliens. Although I don't know because to be honest I still think Aliens is really good. I think James Cameron did a really good job of uh, directing that film. I like the look and the cinematography. But the original Alien is atmospherically the best. I mean it creates this very isolated, very intense very suspenseful and in a way claustrophobic even though it's out in its outer space and it's this huge ship it still has this claustrophobic sense because the alien is just so unstoppable and so dangerous at the end of the film it's just you know daisy ridley and she's having to fight it on her own and even five or six of them are, are no match for this thing especially without much in terms of defense so yeah, this is this is a really good film. One of the best sci-fi horror movies of all time. Not not my favorite, but still really good. I'm, I'm a big Ridley Scott fan because he made Blade Runner. So I want to grab one that I already saw. Killjoy Two. I can't say much about it. I watched all three of them six years ago for the first time, and there's really, really trashy urban horror movies. I don't remember them very well. Uh, there's not much to remember. I remember them not being as bad as I thought they would be, and for that reason, I don't remember them as well. I really only remember the first one that well. Um, it's a classic killer clown story. I think the later films, there's like five of them now, I've got three of them. The later films are more comedy horror, which makes more sense for what they can pull off. Their, their effective abilities, they can't really terrify you, but maybe they can... Because it, it, even the original films, which... which films which are just straight horror movies even they're just fun and kind of funny whenever you watch them even though they're really bad so I don't, not much to say about that one <laughs> troll 2 i've never watched this the whole way through i've seen a bunch of scenes and maybe at different points like when me and my uncle used to hang out i think we watched half of it one time and then like the other half of it a different time it's supposed to be like one of the greatest bad horror movies ever made. Or just one of the greatest bad movies ever made. When it comes to movies that are so bad they're good, the the ones everybody knows are not usually the ones that I love. I don't remember this that well. I remember the memorable scenes and I remember they're all named Potter in the movie. Bad movies that I think that are so bad they're good that I'm thinking of are a couple of M. Night Shyamalan movies. Um, there's a movie by Wes Craven called Cursed. It's kind of a cult movie as well, but it's not as big, but I've always really liked that movie. I don't know. I've never, I've never found the overly appealing charm. It's still fun to watch every once in a while, for sure. And it's just so ridiculous. But yeah, I just never, I never understood the appeal. I, under, I understand the appeal. Like I've said, is so bad it's good. But I've just never completely got it. You know what? I'm gonna try from the other, from the other box now. <sighs> Spider-Man One. I love. The original Toby Spider-Man. This isn't a horror film. I don't. I think I just when I was getting my horror movies, I wanted to watch the Spider-Man movies again. Whenever I was going through them, great movie, but I'm not going to spend any time talking about it because I said these are horror movies. Cursed. I just mentioned this a few minutes ago. I did not mean to pull this out. To me, this is a so bad it's good film. It went through like development hell for like the longest time, and it's by Wes Craven. By directors considered to be like a master of his genre. And he certainly is, but this movie, you can, whenever you watch it, you can tell what it was going for. And you can tell that it was going for this, like, early 2000s urban, chilling werewolf film with Wes Craven behind it. So, kind of taking, I guess, kind of maybe the Scream feel, those kind of horror movies that, that, that Scream started, and applying it to a werewolf story. And for that reason, it's so fun. I just, I really enjoy this movie. It's interesting to see that 
uh, late nineties, early two thousands horror. A plot is something that's not slasher or paranormal. Well, it is paranormal, but not like ghosts or hauntings, but, you know, a werewolf film. I'm a really big fan of this movie. It's My uncle's the one who kind of got me into it. I, I saw it whenever I was younger, and then when I got older, and I had more of an appreciation for, like, film quality, I rewatched it. I was like, wow, that was bad, but I loved every minute of it. The original It. Hmm. What can I say about this? Well, first of all, I like that cover more than the slip cover, but I keep my slip covers. I think this is from Walmart. Yeah, I, I read the book a long time ago, and from what I remember, the book is has parts that are actually just a lot better than the movie. The best part of the book is the explanation of its character, or Pennywise's character, but I mean, it's it's called It. That's kind of the name, as opposed to Pennywise. It was just one of his forms. The original It, man, the first half has some moments that's pretty good and it's got pretty well not pretty good but like above average i would say the scares aren't very effective to me and to me tim curry is not a very effective pennywise well he's a very effective pennywise he's not a very scary pennywise he's more he's definitely more in it for the laughs than he is for the for the scares as opposed to the new it i think i think bill skarsgård i think that's the one who played i know it's a skarsgård i think it's bill who played Pennywise in that movie. I thought he was just more effective. I never thought, whenever I was a little kid, people used to talk about this movie. My teachers would talk about, would talk about this movie. My family would. About one of the, the freakiest, most unsettling horror movies they ever saw. Gave them nightmares. And even whenever I was younger, because whenever I was younger, I wasn't as, I was a little more sensitive, sensitive to horror movies. I still didn't find this that scary. And the second half, the second part of the, of the entire series is just not good at all to me. It's just not a classic. It's very campy in the second one. Oh, Evil Dead, which I've never opened because I've seen it so many times before I even bought the Blu-ray. I think I used to have another Blu-ray that got hurt or just wasn't in very good condition. So, and it was on sale at Best Buy. So I bought this version. Obviously, I love Evil Dead. I'm a big fan of the Evil Dead series. I'd say it's one of my favorite horror movie series because I like every single one that's in it. I think this is a very effective horror film, but at the same time, because the Evil Dead series, which is more Ash Williams series than any other character besides the remake, Evil Dead came to be no more as a horror comedy series than as opposed to just a full horror series. The only full horror film in the franchise is the original one, which it's many people's favorite, or Evil Dead 2 is kind of half and half. I'm more of an Evil Dead 2 fan. I think these movies work more as horror comedies than they do as horror. Because even the original Evil Dead kind of has this humorous underline, which may or may not have been intentional. I don't think it was. But it's still got some very effective horror scenes. It's almost so ridiculous sometimes that it's terrifying. Especially because it, it established a cabin out in the middle of the woods. In my home state, um, may I add, Tennessee. Yeah, it's one of the best horror films of all time. Not one of my favorite, well... Probably up there, but not one of my absolute favorite horror films of all time, but definitely up there, and it deserves the credit that it gets. Sinister. I saw this movie in theaters. This is a newer horror movie. Um, I saw this, it was in 2012, I believe. It was helmed by Scott Derrickson. I really like this movie a lot. When I saw it in theaters, I was like overjoyed by it. Of course, this was during a time when horror movies were just... I would say hit and miss, but they were more missed than they were hit. It's a lot of people consider it to be like arguably the best horror film of 2012, which I'm sure there's there's like more independent films that came out that year that are not as well known that are probably better. But as far as mainstream releases, this movie and Cabin in the Woods are the only ones that really got a lot of positive attention. It's still not excellent. It's not like beyond like beyond your imagination, scary and good, but it's a good story shot well directed well and a good main a great protagonist and it's played by ethan hawk a great actor it's known mostly for the scenes in which he's watching a super 8 camera where a mysterious killer is filming his murder of families and it's got this like i don't know if internet horror is the right word but if you ever watch youtubers like rainbot mr nightmare or so, someone in, or in that realm they'll be like discussing like, true stories or true bizarre internet horrors and this kind of has that feel but it's about a guy who's who's investigating this like unknown to the public but it's still extremely terrifying and dangerous killer 
that turns out to be supernatural, but it's more effective as a as an investigative horror film where he's watching Super 8 uh, films. This movie is really good. You should definitely check it out. The sequel's not as good. It's this big thing. Okay, well, I bought this from Best Buy a long time ago. I had to. I noticed it was big and I had to pull it out. It's called 50 Horror Classics. And they had different versions, like 50 sci-fi classics, 50 horror classics. I think they had like a 50 romance classics. Every single one of these movies are public domain movies most of them are bad good bad like so like really fun bad but you know bad except for a few obviously any public domain horror movie release collection is going to have not of the living dead on it it's got this in there one of my favorite horror movies of all time is the last man on earth the original adaptation of the I Am Legend novel by Richard Matheson. But still a bunch of cool stuff in here. Like Dementia 13 in here. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is in here. Uh, the Terror is in here. Maniac from 34 is in here. Some pretty fun stuff. That's some kind of set. So I'm going to pull that out again. Scream. I just <laughs> I just mentioned this a few, a few minutes ago as well. This is the... I guess the second Wes Craven film that I've pulled out. This is probably one of my all-time favorite horror movies. Like if I would, if I were to have a top ten list, this would be in there. Um, it's not any Scream fan will tell you that these films are not horror comedies, but there is like comedy seasoning all over the film. It's 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 more of an enjoyable film, especially for fans of horror movies and slasher films from the 70s and 80s in general than it is for people who are trying to be who, who, who are looking to be scared looking to be terrified it's very fun it's definitely one of the um, best horror films of the 90s it's a classic it established the whole franchise in which only really two well now three because the new one's really good i'd say three legitimately good ones and only the original scream was a classic a lot of people go back and forth between whether or not the original scream or scream 2 is better Scream 2 was very incremental and it's really well executed, but the original Scream to me is the true classic. The meta humor, satire, classic original Scream can't be beat, in my opinion, with the best, I don't say the best villains because they're not revealed to the end, but the most interesting twist. And also the first the first twist so you don't see it coming. Just very clever, very fresh and poignant. Really good horror movie. Quarantine. This is a. I watched this a couple years ago for the first time. This is a remake of a movie from. I believe it's a Japanese horror film. I believe it's the, the original. I think it's called REC, like Record. I think that's what it's called. And it's a zombie movie, essentially. But it's more of a biological terror horror film. It's more about the, the, the fear of being locked in a house. Can't You're not allowed to leave and see your loved ones or go home. Then it is the actual zombies who don't really become much of a problem, but for like 15, 20 minutes in the movie, are they actually dealing with one? But when they do become zombies, they're terrifying. If you were to make a movie, a, like a zombie apocalypse movie, and, and these zombies were the, were the bad guys, that would be probably really good. It's a found footage movie. I don't mind found footage the way a lot of other people do. I get that found footage horror movies can come across as lazy because it's so easy to make. And it looks, it's so cheap to make that you can just make them and make them and make them and spend very little money and make all kinds of money back. I still don't mind the medium though. It's newer and it's interesting. And this movie is very creative with it. And it gives it this like, it's called cinema, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but verite, where the documentary style filmmaking kind of adds to the artistic nature. It like, takes a chance on Massacre, has, to a lesser form, has that style, even though it's not a mockumentary. But this is a really good horror movie. It's very effective, very thrilling. I'd say this is just a good, solid, found footage horror movie. Not excellent, besides a few parts that are pretty creepy, but still a really good horror movie. A pretty good horror movie. <clears throat> well, I guess I have to admit that I own this movie. Cannibal Holocaust, which I don't have on Blu-ray. I'd like to get it on Blu-ray. It's an Italian horror film. Cannibal Holocaust is considered to be one of the most controversial horror films of all time, mainly because of the extremely, extremely realistic and impressive special effects and gore, but also because they actually killed real animals for scenes of the film, like monkeys, uh, a giant tur, a big, like a giant turtle, spiders, and the way that the people are murdered are, I mean. 
like ghastly and disturbing and horrifying. It's the classic indigenous people who turned out who were like cannibals, which aren't they aren't. I mean, I can't remember exactly like what the nat- the true nature of the people are, but it's more it's the classic we're the real monsters, the invaders, the colonists were the real monsters in the film, which definitely is suggested by this film story because the things that the the documentary filmmakers who are filming these people do are truly disturbing and like depraved. I'm not a huge fan of this movie. I've only seen it like twice. I've never really enjoyed the repulsive nature. I've never found the appeal. The effects are definitely really impressive. Um, the director actually was almost charged with, almost charged with murder or was charged with murder, especially considering the people that he was charged with murdering never showed up to court to prove that it was all just fake special effects the first time. And then they had to come back. They had to, I think they arrested him. I don't remember the the entire story, but that's that's the most interesting thing about this film is the special effects and the nature of the film. It's definitely an important horror movie in horror film history, just not one that I particularly love. And we got Drag Me to Hell. I've got this on Blu-ray too. I don't know where it is, but it doesn't matter. It's the same movie. Um, this movie I watched around when the time that it came out. I watched it when it came out. We rented it from the video store. And it's directed by Sam Raimi. This is the second Sam Raimi movie that I've actually went over. I'm surprised how many people don't know about this movie. It's really good. I mean, I'd be tempted to almost sometimes wonder if it's one of my favorite horror movies. Not of all time, I guess. But definitely one of my favorites of the, of the 2010s. Of a very dry era of horror. This was this one stands out. And not only because it's just above average of its first time. It's really good. It's got that Evil Dead feel. It's It's... Just like Evil Dead, it's at its core a horror movie, not a horror comedy, but it's got ridiculousness and bizarreness and very uh, chaotic storytelling, but at the same time, like, very defined rules that don't make a lot of sense in some ways, but they don't have to make sense because they're scary. And also a terrifying concept about, you know, you could be actually dragged to hell. Or, you, or you're not going to die. You're going to just be in hell for eternity. And the way that it's shot, the way that it's filmed, the story, the direction, is just, it's just a great movie. It, it got good reviews when it came out. I want—I still want to see it underrated, though, because it's not looked at overly fondly. And I think it's a kind of a modern classic. The Unborn. I'm not going to say much about this movie. It's not incredible. I barely remember it. I just remember it wasn't very good. I watched it whenever I was younger. And it didn't really scare me even then, even though it tries really hard to be like a like a disturbing kind of late two thousands horror film. It's because it's got that style. It's just not very good. It's, it's the classic new. Like I'm, I remember, I remember being full of jump scares and trying to be this like Exorcist level paranormal film, like a lot of those movies at the time were, and it's just not very great. Huh. Chrome School laid, laid to Rest 2 Chrome School or Chrome School Laid to Rest 2. I've seen the first two of these movies. I can't remember how many there are. Um, the first one I love. The first one is a really good horror film. I think it does a good job of, as opposed to Scream, who satirizes the slasher genre, Laid to Rest very much is a love letter to it. It's an interesting idea, first of all. Just a killer who records his murders with the camera on his shoulder and everything. I can't remember this one very well. I remember it being, you know, decent because these movies are not trying to be masterclass, atmospherically potent and artistic horror films. They're trying to be modern slasher films. And in that way, they work from what I remember. I wish I pulled the other one out instead because it's more interesting. It's more fun from what I remember. But these movies are notable for sure. Hmm. Halloween Resurrection. I've got this on Blu-ray too. I mean, I've got the yeah. I've been avoiding grabbing it because I'm trying to talk about the entire collection. I've got the whole movie on Blu-ray, whole whole series on Blu-ray right here. This is one of my least favorite films in the Halloween franchise. My least favorite is still Rob Zombie's Halloween Two. That movie is just so ghastly. I'd say Halloween Five and this film are below Rob Zombie's Halloween for me. I know that would get that would give me a lot of hate. <laughs> for saying that, but I just don't like this movie very much, or Halloween 5, I'd rather watch Rob Zombie's Halloween than either of those two, Now, I like all the rest of them better than, Rob, better than Rob Zombie's Halloween, 
and I like this movie. I like Halloween two the least of the original ten of the first ten movies, which includes the remakes, not the new David Gordon Green movies. But yeah, this movie is just it's just so stupid, and he's not scary at all in this film. He looks so basic. He doesn't even look like he doesn't even have that eighties look that some people kind of like for his cheesy effects from Halloween four and five. It's just not a good movie. Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Probably my favorite film in the Friday the 13th franchise. Friday the 13th is probably my least favorite of the of the big four of uh, Texas Chainsaw, Halloween, Friday, and Nightmare. I don't remember any of these movies that well. Well, I remember Jason X pretty well because I hate that movie. And Jason Goes to Hell. I remember, I remember the bad ones more than I remember the decent ones. I just remember the ones that I liked. And really, I don't I don't like the first one all that well. But it's the most different one because it's not Jason. Two is also pretty different because he's not wearing his mask. Which is really just the one, th one thing that makes it different. But that's why I kind of remember the images and the scenery more. Um, but this is probably my, probably my favorite when it comes just to the people people go out into the woods, Jason kills kills a bunch of teenagers. This is probably the best one of those uh in my opinion. I'd say 2 through 7 I remember really liking a lot. But you know what? I haven't seen them in so long. I need to go back and watch them again because as much of a horror fan as I am, these movies like Friday the 13th is probably objectively the least quality of the original of the big four i mean it's probably got like more enjoyable films than like texas chainsaw or and some would say halloween 2 maybe but it's it's the one that's just the most solid whereas the other three have one or two films that are considered to be horror classics like truly artistic and poignant films these don't really have any of those they're just really fun popcorn fun very like i want to sit down and watch a horror movie i'm gonna watch friday the 13th bam so yeah Ooh. Shaun of the Dead. My second favorite zombie movie of all time. That's I used to think that was kind of unusual. Apparently not. A bunch, there's a lot of love in the horror film and zombie film community for this movie. For one thing, even though it's a horror comedy, it's so clever. It's so well executed. And it has a couple of actually scary moments. And it's legitimately like the zombies look really good and the effects are really good. And the, the acting is very well done. The, the cinematography is excellent, which to me is really important in a zombie movie is that you shoot it well because it's got to have a certain look, whatever look you're going for, trying to capture that kind of scenery and that kind of universe. And it's just so fun. I've probably seen this movie 20 times at least. I have it twice. I have this copy by itself, and then I have the, the trilogy, which is Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. But yeah, I love Shaun of the Dead. I don't think this movie gets enough love ever since Zombieland came out. That movie gets quoted a lot. But that's a good movie, but I think this movie is significantly better than that movie. I think this is much more clever, uh, much tighter writing. It's shot more. Its cinematography is better. So, uh, yeah, really good movie. Halloween H2O. I love Halloween, so I don't mind talking about two movies in the series. Halloween H2O is honestly a good movie. It's actually... Well, a decent. It's a decent film. It's it is a movie that whenever I first watched it, I was like, "Wow, this movie is really good. This is a lot better than a lot of the sequels that have come out." But now my love for it. Every time I watch it, it gets a little worse. Not really that I find any problems with it necessarily. I don't find many good qualities. Like nothing about this film draws me to watch it. Besides, ironically, Halloween is a movie that directly influenced Scream but then Scream directly influenced how this movie was made. It's style, the feel, the tone, the music even. It's a very fun film. It's it's really enjoyable. Definitely better than some Halloween movies. Although, I would probably say I like Halloween 6 more than I like this movie. Even though it's this is like objectively a better movie. I'd say 4 is better than this movie. I would still put this in the good Halloween films category. Because to me, Halloween movies are either enjoyable or not enjoyable and of the enjoyable ones only one of them is really a bad movie Halloween Curse is really the only enjoyable bad Halloween film after that if it's actually bad it's just not very enjoyable either um and to me Rob Zombie's Halloween isn't bad it's got a lot of problems but it's got a lot of good things too but yeah Halloween H2O decent decent movie
All right, this is my last one. I'm going to pull one from each bin and do both of them. The Blair Witch Project and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I'll talk about this one first. The Blair Witch Project is a movie that's gotten better each time I've watched it. I've watched it like two or three times. It's considered to be a classic and an influ like an extremely influential horror film because it created a whole genre, the found footage genre. Not the mockumentary genre, but it was the first found footage idea. You know, this is just people who just recorded their experience with a, with a home camera, with an accessible camera that anybody could shoot, and it was cheap, but it was really effective. And when I first watched it, I was like, okay, it was. I can see why this is a good movie, and I can see why this is gets a lot of love. But I just didn't love it myself. I thought I, I was just like, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I would watch that again. That's just not the best horror movie I've ever seen or anything. But then I watched it again and I did more reading into it and about it. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I can I can see why more so why this movie gets a love. Like I mean I could before, but now now I'm starting to feel some of that. I'm like, you know what? This is actually a really effective horror movie. Especially whenever you look at some of the like online ARGs, artificial reality games, that stands for artificial reality games, whatever it's called, or the online like games where people people play where you, you kind of follow the story and you find different clues and different part, like video clips from different sites and everything. I'd say it directly inspired that because that's the advertising for this movie was so good, kind of making people believe that it might be real. So I'd say, yeah, I'd say this is this is a movie that can go down in, the, in history as one of the most important horror movies ever made just because it inspired a whole genre where there's been like so many movies made with found footage. Paranormal Activity is a huge uh, series. It comes from this genre. Alright, so the last movie is... Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is honestly my second favorite TCM movie. <clears throat> I would put this below the original, of course. Of these horror directors, it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is definitely the most unsavory franchise of all of them it's had the most horrible installments and the least good ones there's really only four in the whole franchise that i love which is more than i can say about friday 13th but there's only four that i love and the only ones that i actually love are ones that are actually legitimately good on some level the original of course is one of the most powerful and effective horror films ever made but tcm2 was made i think 12 yeah 12 years later and in, from 86, and it is honestly a really good sequel because it's directed by the same guy, yet he made the decision to make it a horror comedy, a, a satire of the original, and that's brilliant. I mean, that's just so clever. Um, now, he abandoned that idea with number three, which I really like. I really like Leatherface, TCM3. Um but this is definitely the second best one, and it's really the only other one that kind of stands on its own to me. Well, I'd say the remake stands on its own because it's got a kind of a different feel, different pacing, a similar tone, but definitely a modernized tone. Whereas this one stands on its own as a sequel because it's got its own feel, its own characters apart from the original besides Leatherface, um, its own scenery, different scenery, different setting. It's just very different from the original, and for those reasons, I think it's actually a pretty solid sequel. Alright, so that was my first random horror movies video. Maybe I can do it again sometime. And as I collect more, I can throw them in there. Of course, when I, when I shelve these movies, then I'm probably not going to... Um, that'd be different, unless I like put my hand on the shelf, but then even then I'll know whether I'm, on, whether I'm in the A's or the D's or whatever. So, I hope you enjoyed. This is Poison Apple, and have a good night.